Unless you've been under a rock for, well, all of the past two years, you probably heard of the driver Max Verstappen and the constructor that reckons it sells energy drinks. In this video, I want to go over how and why Red Bull has been so dominant this year in F1. Let's start with Red Bull. I'm pretty sure at this point they're more of an extreme sports company than energy drinks, but they still do it anyway. Their performance this year has been absolutely dominant with 19 podiums. Currently, Red Bull is on 511 points in the Constructors' Championship, and then Ferrari is on 376, and Mercedes is on 346. So yeah, they're pretty ahead. And for me personally, the best thing about Red Bull winning is that it's different. Lewis Hamilton is an unbeatable driver, but my god, eight years of the Silver Arrows dominating was plenty enough. And to be clear, eight years of any team dominating is more than enough. And just remember, whilst Max did take the Drivers' Championship for 2021, it was once again Mercedes taking the Constructors. And now we're back to a truly vintage Red Bull, and of course Christian Horner and the Red Bull team already do have a history. They won four in a row with the mighty Sebastian Vettel from 2010 to 2013. Then their powertrain really started to struggle to compete with Mercedes when they went to Renault. Now they're on their fourth year of the Honda engines and they've got it dialed in, and it's definitely working for them. And all of this is showing in their race wins. I mean, yeah, they had a terrible round one with those double DNS, but look at all those P1s. And if that's not dominance, well, I'm not sure what is. It's been professional, ruthless, quick, and a level above every other team. And that includes the big teams, Ferrari and Mercedes. They simply haven't been able to compete with the consistency that Rebels put forward so far in 2022. But that's not to say they're unbeatable. Earlier in the season, we saw Ferrari right amongst it. In Bahrain, the Red Bulls were on a podium whilst Ferrari took one and two. Then Max did what he does in round two in Saudi Arabia, but Leclerc and Sainz were still second and third, making Ferrari of a stronger team. In round three, it was Leclerc winning the Australian Grand Prix, but Sergio Perez was still second. And at that point in the year, Ferrari was absolutely looking like a team reborn. However, at this point, I don't know if they started reading too much of their own press or the Italian gremlins just started creeping into their setup, but that's somewhat unraveled. And in fairness to them, that's still a relative way of looking at it because they're still sitting second. They're ahead of Mercedes and they have a very quick car. By all accounts, the difference in speed between the teams is negligible. And yet, the gap in the Constructors' Championship is anything but. From round 4, Red Bull were appearing on podiums like clockwork. Ferrari's difficulties were summed up by their home race. Charles finished in 6 and Carlos got a DNF. Ferrari's not slow, but they are unreliable, and couple that unreliability with strategy calls that are so bad they seem to be a host of new memes every week, they simply just can't compete with Red Bull. I'm also starting to imagine at this point, Charles Leclerc is tired of seeing photos of himself looking sad with a witty one-liner about the strategist at Ferrari, but frankly, it's true. Even Leclerc himself can't hold it in anymore. Speaking with Sky Sports after the Hungarian Grand Prix, Leclerc was critical of his team's decision to switch him to hard tyres. And they did that after all the other teams had struggled to even get temperature into them. He said, I felt very strong in the mediums. Everything was under control. I don't know why we needed to go to the hards. I said on the radio that I was very comfortable on medium and I wanted to go as long as possible on those tyres because the feeling was good. I don't know why we took a different decision. And that's not the only failures that Ferrari's had. In Austria, Carlos Sainz's engine was set on fire. Granted, Leclerc did win there. In Hungary, after stopping Leclerc for the third time, they gave the race win to Verstappen who started in 10th, which it's surely inexcusable for Ferrari to start in P2 and P3 and then miss a podium altogether. Leclerc and Sainz only managed P4 and P6. A similar blunder took place in Monaco where the team double stacked in the pits, and then at Silverstone, Leclerc had a damaged car and Ferrari refused to pit him for some reason. And other failures also happened during the season in Spain, Azerbaijan and Canada. Forget I never made the same mistake twice. At Ferrari, it's let's make the same mistake a bunch of times so that we're really sure it's a terrible idea to do it again. And yet, despite that, Matteo Bonotto argues that they make the right decisions with the information that they have. And if that's the case, they need to get better information or improve the ability to read their information. Leclerc and Sainz are definitely capable of pole position, podiums and victories, provided the car doesn't explode and the strategists at Ferrari can keep them in the race. Meanwhile, the same mistakes simply aren't happening over at Red Bull. Now, let's be clear here. Max Verstappen with that Red Bull team can challenge for a championship even without the fastest car. He did win last year whilst being pretty equal machinery to Mercedes. And this year, he is technically driving a car that is slower than the Ferrari, but he's still sitting on 310 points. The next best is Charles Leclerc and Red Bull's other driver, Sergio Perez, who are nearly 110 points behind him. Max is a big part of Red Bull's dominance, and the difference between him and Sergio is proof that it's not just the car. From P14 in Spa, he took first place by 17 seconds. In P2, his teammate was in the same car. And if that's not impressive enough, he took first place after just 12 laps of the race. Verstappen was playing chess while every other team was playing chess. Checkers. 
And then Max backed it up, going two for two after the mid-season break at Zanvor. And you can talk about your tinfoil hat conspiracy theories and Rebels illegal strategies all you like. The man is a freakish racer in an absolute rocket of a car. He's also extremely consistent. He's racked up a streak of six podiums, then another streak of five podiums, which is ongoing. Do the maths and suddenly you realize he's almost always amongst it. Of course, whilst there's only one man per podium, F1 is a team sport and the team behind Max aren't exactly slouches. The RB18 is praised for his performance and Adrian Newey's construction is a big part of that. Everyone in the paddock has the Red Bull car for the one to be and Newey is a hard man to replicate. He did his thesis on ground effect aerodynamics and he's putting every bit of it to work getting Red Bull onto podiums. You know it's impressive when even Lewis Hamilton, instead of praising Max, who we all know he does have a history with, heaped the praise on Newey. Speaking with Crash, Hamilton was humble enough to correct his past self, saying, I'm impressed with Adrian Newey and his team. Anything I've said in the past about the team, I didn't mean it in a negative way. I think years ago I said something about them being a drinks company, and I was just really highlighting that you would bet more on a car company, but they've proved me wrong and everyone else. And as Red Bull's slowly been ascending up the pecking order, they've done it through incremental changes throughout the year, as all teams do, but again, they just seem to be doing it better. They've shaved weight, helped with tyre degradation, and improved their reliability. All we've got to see the proof of that is the lack of retirements they've had this season. There's little question but their car is working. It's seemingly just an all-conquering engine. After Spa, Charles speaking with race fans said, They are still extremely quick in the straights. It looks like they have no downforce, and then they get into the corners and they are as quick as us or quicker so it's a bit worrying. Meanwhile, Matteo Bonotto can't even attribute the RB18's advantage to any specific track. Verstappen came from 10th in Hungary and 14th in Spa. Two different tracks, one high downforce and the other low. And whilst at the start of the season, Red Bull certainly had their own issues with three DNFs in the opening three races, they're gone now. Since then, they've only had two DNFs in 12 rounds. Meanwhile, Ferrari are sitting at seven DNFs since round three. For Ferrari, if they can't baffle their fans with their strategies, they'll bamboozle them with the engine issues. And the other thing that's tying it all together is the phenomenal strategy that's been delivered by Hannah Schmitz. Hannah's strategy might go unnoticed, but trust me, the effects of it don't go unfelt. You don't start from 10th like Max did in Hungary or 14th like he did in Spa and win a race without a good strategy. For that matter, Max has only started on pole position four times in 2022 so far, but he's had 10 victories. And yes, he is a good driver, but Formula 1 isn't all about good races. And if it was, Ferrari wouldn't be spiking in engagement on Twitter every time they mess up a race. The big difference between the two teams is definitely Schmitz. It's pretty safe to say that both the Constructors' and Drivers' Championship would look very different if she was dressed in red. Her brilliance comes from the lack of ego that Ferrari have and knowing the talent that she has working with Max. On the strategy they use in Hungary taking Max from 10th to 1st, you get the sense of her ability to listen. She said after qualifying, both drivers were very vocal about having hardly any grip even though they were both already on soft tyres. The strategy? Well, they stuck with soft tyres starting far back on the grid. The usual move would be going out on harder compounds and pushing the car for longer, delaying the pit stops. It's what I do and that's why I'm talking about Hannah on YouTube instead of sitting there being a Red Bull strategist. And Verstappen himself has praised Smith after his win at Hungary, saying, You can't afford many mistakes. It's of course very hard to be on the good side, let's say it like that, but I think we have lots of good guys and girls in the team. Today, I think Hannah, our strategist, was insanely calm. Yeah, she's very good. I can't imagine it's easy to find brilliant strategists. It must be fairly rare combat combination of intelligence, nerve, and absolute zen under enormous amounts of pressure. And so at this point, Red Bull pretty much have both the Drivers' and Constructors' Championship in the bag for 2022, but how long can it last? I don't think Red Bull will have an era of dominance like Mercedes has had. I think for big teams, Mercedes especially have too much money, science, and good drivers to allow that to happen. And yes, I'm aware of the budget cap, but at least they can match Red Bull with their investments. Plus, I think in 2023, Mercedes will likely get their engine right and they won't be hampered by strategy failings like Ferrari are. And with Hamilton, who needs no introduction, and Russell, who is full of potential in the second seat, they can absolutely take a Constructors' Championship. And just remember, they're backed up by Toto Wolff, who's definitely done it before. They have the experience to support and undoubtedly the belief in themselves to retake both championships. And if Red Bull has any weaknesses, it's the gap between Sergio Perez and Max Verstappen. I would say at this point in time, Max Verstappen is the best driver on the grid, but I don't think Max and Sergio are as good as a combination as Lewis and George. That being said, I don't think Sergio Perez is bad enough by any stretch to warrant a replacement. I mean, who would you even replace him with? But I do think George and Lewis will be beating him to Perez next year, meaning that Mercedes will once again be winning the Constructors' Championship. And then we have Ferraris, the absolute underachievers of the past few years. I think 
think if they just sacked their entire strategy team and started fresh, Leclerc might have a chance next year, but he's not quite on the level of Max. He is close enough in that great car, and with great strategy or a bit of luck, he could make up the difference. And this might be hopeful, but I think the dark horse could be McLaren. McLaren has tons of potential. They're a racing car company, they've won plenty of times in the past, and Lando Norris is young enough to win some championships in his career. And if, and it is a very big if, but if McLaren is able to build a great race car, Lando Norris could lead them to glory. Don't believe me? Well, just look what he's done with a very inferior car so far. He got P7 in Saudi Arabia, P3 in Imola, P8 in Spain, P6 in Monaco, P6 in Great Britain, and then P7 in Austria, France, and Hungary, as well as most recently a P7 in Netherlands. They're not blow your mind, rock your world results, but Lando is consistent. He's only had one DNF so far in 2022, and it was barely his fault, and he's only missed the points on four occasions. Put him in a Ferrari or a Mercedes or a Red Bull, and he'd undoubtedly do the job. If McLaren can take that step up and match their car with the big teams, then Lando will make the most of it. And I think this would probably be the most fun outcome for F1. As a fan, you want more competition between the teams. It ups the dramas race to race, and it makes it more likely that the two championships will be a close fought affair. And now we have Oscar Piastri joining McLaren too. He might be able to help the team grow faster, and who knows, he might shock the world with his talent, but all of that is yet to be seen. So I know I've had some hot takes in this video, so comment down below with your disapproving comments. I'm ready for them. But other than that, I'll see you for the next video where I want to talk about why Verstappen is so much better than Sergio Perez.